Question four is a classic example of uh, plug and chug. So just to read it, we have a plane electromagnetic wave, so it travels in a plane, simply, it does not travel like this, just a simple plane, with wavelength three meters, travels in vacuum in the positive x, in the positive direction of the x-axis. The electric field of amplitude 300 volts per meter oscillates parallel to the y-axis. What are the frequency, angular frequency, and wave number of the wave? Classic plug and chug. First equation is frequency equals the speed of light divided by wavelength. We know the speed of light. We're given the wavelength, which is 3 meters, and we get 10 to the eighth hertz. Or actually, be 100 megahertz. Angular frequency, of course, angular frequency equals 2 pi times the frequency. Again, we calculated the frequency from the previous equation, and we multiply by 2 pi. 2 pi times 10 to the eighth, that gives us 6.28 times 10 to the eighth radians per second. Wave number, again, classic case of plug and chug. K equals 2 pi over wavelength. We have the wavelength, that's a given. 2 pi divided by 3 equals 2.909, sorry, 2.09 uh, meters divided by meters per meter. 2. What is the amplitude of the magnetic field component? The amplitude, well, since we know the relationship, the electric field equals the speed of light times the magnetic field, the magnetic field is the amplitude of uh, B is the, is, has a magnetic field amplitude, and C is, uh, again, B, the letter B, is the amplitude of the magnetic field, and C is the speed of light in a vacuum. Plug and chug. B equals electric field over speed of light. 300, because that's a given. 300 volts per meter. Divided by the speed of light, we get 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. C. Parallel to which axis does the magnetic field oscillate? Well, it's definitely not going to be the y-axis because electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular. It says that it's traveling, the wavelength is traveling in the x direction. So if the wave, the light, the electromagnetic wave is, is traveling in the x direction and the magnetic field oscillates in the y direction, that means that the magnetic field must also travel in the x direction, but oscillate in the z axis, along the z axis. And that is what we got, along the z direction. D, what is the time average rate of energy flow in watts per meter squared associated with this wave? Another case of plug and chug. That would be, S. this is S average, which is the average time average rate of energy flow. One half epsilon naught times the speed of light electric field squared. One half times epsilon naught, it's the value of epsilon naught. Speed of light we have here, electric field again, 300 volts per meter. We get 119.48 watts per meter squared. E, so let me this uh, a little bit smaller. E. The wave uniformly illuminates the surface area, the surface, a surface of area 2 meters squared. If the surface totally absorbs the wave, what are the rate at which momentum is transferred to the surface? Well, that is, uh, sorry, that is uh, d over p dt. This equation again is in the, in all of this is chapter 32 is equal to the electric field times the magnetic field divided by mu naught speed of light times the area which we're given in E. Plug and chug. E is 300. Magnetic field, 10 to the minus 6. Area is 2 meters, so times 2. Divided by mu naught, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. 
Speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th. We end up with 1.592 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. As you know, as you should know from physics 145, the derivative of momentum with respect to time is the force. Lastly, radiation pressure on the surface. Another equation. The radiation pressure on the surface equals the average, the time average rate of air and energy flow divided by the speed of light. We calculated the time averaged rate of energy flow from part D. We plug 119.48 on the top, speed of light on the bottom, and we end up with 3.98 times 10 to the minus seventh newtons per meter. Classic case of plug and chug, and this is question four.